Hey everyone, today we're going to be focusing on the Blackmagic Design SDI to HDMI 6G Mini Converter product. This is one that was paid for by patrons of this channel through Patreon. And if you're interested in helping to support this channel to bring product reviews like this, uh, be sure to follow the link uh, up here to uh, participate in that and, and help to bring additional products to the channel for review. So anyway, my name is Doug. I run a company in Orem, Utah called Doug Johnson Productions. And we do live event videography, so conferences, music, concerts, uh, for sporting events, those sorts of things. So uh, as part of that, I use a lot of different gear and publish reviews of some of that equipment here on this YouTube channel. So we'll start with an unboxing. I don't want to dwell on the unboxing, so this, is, this part's going to go pretty quick, but uh, this product is still in its original shrink wrap. Uh, let's go ahead and open that up. Unless you're going to see a little better about what's going on here, so pull the shrink wrap off. And this is pretty standard for the Blackmagic uh, mini converters. They all come in a box very similar to this. And uh, pop, pop the top off here. This part can be a little tricky at times. There we go. All right. And from there, you get the internal box, which we slide out. Set that outer box aside here for a minute. Alright, thank you from manufacturer. Information on where to download the latest software, which I do highly recommend. It's just basically the support page of the Blackmagic Design website. And then the box set up like this. Uh, they do use very eco-friendly materials. So inside we have the power, su power supply, actual unit itself, and then a number of converters for different power systems around the world. So uh, I'll pull all those out so you guys can briefly see what's included. So one of those, one for UK, that style, and then the one we style we use here in the US. So move these out of the way. And then I put a little protective plastic piece over that. And then we slide the plug in place. So, so there's that. Now, I'm not actually not actually going to use that that power supply for, for purposes of demo today. I've got none of these things. And then we get to the actual converter itself. So, uh, this is similar to their previous version, which was called the SDI to, to HDMI 4K. Uh, this one does take an inter does take a 4K signal. Um, as the previous one did, but it adds a couple of new features. So the, the biggest one is that it supports 3D LUTs, or woke-up tables. So you can have this actually process uh, colors on, on an image, and I'll demonstrate that here in the video. Um, just a quick tour around the device. We'll start over here with the, with the power. So 12-volt uh, power input. This uses a 5.5 slash 2.5 millimeter jack, and then we have Next to that, an SDI input, an alternate SDI input, and then an SDI output. Now the alternate input here is as used in case you're dealing with a video source that uh, is rather important and you don't want um, a break in a cable or whatever to cause a problem. So what you can do is you can, create, you can uh, connect both the primary SDI input and the alternate SDI input, and then if the, if the primary input goes dead, it automatically switches over to the alternate SDI input. And whichever video source is currently being processed on one of those two inputs also is looped through to the SDI output, but you can also do 3D LUT processing on that as well. Now switching around here to over to the top, there's a series of eight dip switches on there, and they include a kind of a cheat sheet on the bottom there for what those different dip switches mean. So, um, so just just um, get away from that for one second. So uh, look over here at the left side of the device, and we have two quarter-inch TRS jacks, and then the HDMI output. And these these jacks here are used for audio, and that's important to mention now because the very first uh, dip switch uh, readings here or options are whether to output either analog audio or AES EBU digital audio on those two jacks. So. So the unit outputs either two channels audio 
uh, analog audio via these jacks or two, two channels via AES EBU on the left output. So, all right. Now, we'll take a look at some of the other options here. So, you look, um, switch seven turns the LUT processing on and off. Switch six, switch six lets you choose between LUT one or LUT two. The unit will hold two different LUTs at once. Uh, this fifth one uh, chooses whether the LUT processing is actually uh, output on the SDI, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the SDI loop through output or not. Uh, with that uh, turned off, the LUT processing is only done for HDMI. With it turned on, it's output to both the SDI and the HDMI. And then uh, switches four, three, and two let you determine which of the various audio channels on the SDI input are output through the audio outputs. And you can choose any number of um, eight combinations there. And then the last switch lets you choose whether uh, a feature called instant lock, HDMI instant lock, is turned on or not. Now that at HDMI instant lock feature uh, is important for uh, certain, or if you're using a, basically a consumer television or another device which doesn't resync to a new signal very quickly. So that, what that HDMI lock, instant lock does is it will delay the input signal enough that if the uh, video source happens to change, so you're connected to a video router, and you switch change sources on that video router or whatever uh, that is able to output a consistent uh, signal to the HDMI output so that the TV doesn't have to do a resync each time that source changes. Uh, that does add delay to the signal so if you're dealing with a situation where having having a delay would be a problem you probably want to turn that feature off. In terms of delay otherwise this unit basically has essentially no delay. Uh, as long as you have that HDMI instant lock feature turned off. So, all right, now let's actually hook this guy up and start to, let's start to trying it out and uh, doing, going through the configuration. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is just hook up power. Uh, I happen to have a, another output, or another power connection handy here. All right, and then from there, we're gonna hook up an HDMI source. So let me grab an SDI source. Let me grab an SDI cable and I'll hook that up. And so I'm going to plug that into get the camera to focus here. There we go. So plug that into the SDI. Now if we look here on on the side of it, we'll see a couple of LED lights. So uh, the little LED light next to the power connection there indicating that the the device is receiving power and then you come over here and this little LED light there is indicating that we are getting a, a video signal on the SDI input and that lights up um, whether uh, it comes in on uh, the main the primary input or the secondary uh, alternate input. Now the last connection we need to make here is HDMI so I'll grab HDMI cable and I'll plug that in and then if all is well, yep, we should, there we go. We've got this connected uh, to this TV right here and you can see that the unit is actually doing the conversion. Now, the delay that you're seeing on this television is, has nothing to do with this converter at all. It's actually because I'm running uh, the video through a Terranex Express from Blackmagic uh, to do various video conversions. Because I want to be able to demonstrate um, various video resolutions and how this uh, resolutions and frame rates and how this unit handles that so so I, I made that connection and that does add some delay to the signal so you'll see more a little more delay on this on this TV that here than than the live video directly from the camera all right so with that with that uh, we'll actually connect up a USB cable here and I'll show you the configuration software so the USB port is over here on the same side as the power so we'll plug that in all right, so here is the Blackmagic Converter Setup software. Uh, you can get this from the Blackmagic website, and I highly recommend that you do constantly get uh, updates for these. They, they add new features to these, these products fairly regularly, uh, in addition to bug fixes and other small changes that they, that they decide to make. All right, so first thing we'll do is we'll click on the configura configuration button here, and we'll step through the different options that are available. On the video tab, you have uh, an option here to clip video output to legal levels so that prevents your video signals from going out of what they call legal range 
and then we have the place where we can load load in up to two different 3D lookup tables. We come over here to the audio uh, tab, and then we can set the levels. So uh, this is channel one and two; those are the analog audio levels, and right now they're getting together. So as I move one, it moves the other. If we need separate not separate. If we, need, if we need to separate those, you can come over here and click on, click on the lock. Oh, click on the lock, there we go. And then those can be adjusted individually. So we'll turn that back on and we'll set that back to zero, or at least, there we go, set, set that to zero. And the one below it allows, allows you to set the level if you are uh, working in AES EBU digital. And then the last tab here shows the software version that's installed on the unit itself. All right, so um, with that, uh, Blackmagic actually preloads a couple of different LUTs in here. They load one for monochrome, which basically makes the picture black and white. And they also load a LUT in here for converting um, the film full dynamic range output video output from their Ursa Mini 4.6K and are so many pro cameras uh, to Rec 709, which is standard uh, high definition. So you can see what approximately what uh, the final video would look like if you're if you're using an Ursa Mini and you're and you're recording in, the, in their film lot. So all right, now now what we can do here is we can actually flip the switch. Let me grab a pin here. All right, and switch to this guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to switch. Uh, switch number seven on, and then with any luck, that should mean that yes, there we go. So now the video on on this TV is in black and white because it's applying LUT one to that signal. Now, if we want to switch to the other LUT, this this won't be it won't be a pretty image, but we can certainly do that. So we'll have, uh, come in here and switch, turn switch six on, and now it's running LUT LUT uh, two. On, on the output there. Now we know that the what feature is working. I'll just go ahead and turn that off and do that by switching switch seven back off again. All right, and then with that we should be should be yes we should be we're seeing a signals being passed straight through. All right, the other feature I can demo here is the instant lock. Um, so turn that on. You'll see. The monitor briefly frees well it has that delay that it needs to to do that processing uh, and then from there all right so if I come down here and change the, the source on the video router from program feed to the camera which is on patch two so that should give you a pretty good idea of, of just how, how smoothly it can make a transition from one source to another um, now there is there's a big uh, caveat there and that's that uh, in order for the instant lock feature to work, the different video signals that you're switching between have to be the same resolution and frame rate. Because uh, the resolution and frame rate that it outputs to the, to the display, connected to the display, a TV or a monitor, whatever, is constant. And if you if you send it a different signal type, it has to then generate a whole new signal the signal type in order for the uh, for it to work with the display. So so with that feature, you, you have to make sure that all your sources. Are the same format otherwise there will be a, a, a resync process that has to take place now the last thing i wanted to do here and demoing this thing uh, is demonstrating one of the cool features of the, of this product and this is actually available in their older version as well which i happen to have one of those sitting right here i use these things throughout my trailer this is the 4k version rather than the 6g version and that's down conversion uh, these um, are designed such that you can send um, a 4K signal into them and connect an HD television. So um, I can sort of demonstrate here. Um, so I, the video signal that's going to this monitor, I'm running through a Terranex Express uh, conversion device. And so if I switch over to computer display here, and uh, see me change the video format. Right now I'm not putting 1080p 2398. And if I come up here and select uh, 2160, 2398 and I'll switch back here and I click the button to make that make that change and you'll, you'll see the TV resync to the new signal but uh, so I've got a 4k signal coming from the Terranex Express into this converter here 
and that's going to a, a television which is only capable of high definition. So this is down converting that, that Ultra HD resolution down to 1080p for the for display on the TV. Now there are some limits to this feature. Um, it, it, it can't be used for things like 1080p to 720p. Uh, it maintains the same frame rate, so if you've got a 24p signal coming in, you're going to get a 24p signal coming out. Um, so your display device actually has to be compatible with it, whatever frame rate you're setting it. Uh, what, most televisions these days can handle 60 frame, 30 frame, 30, uh, 24 frame, or if you're in Europe, 20, 25 or, or, six, or, or 50. Um, this does not do frame rate conversion. And so if you're sending a, a, a 24p signal uh, via SDI into the device and your device, your connected television or, or monitor does not work with 24 frames per second, then you won't get any signal. It won't, it doesn't do any sort of alterations on the frame rate. So it's only a resolution scaler. Uh, so, and likewise, if, if your display doesn't support interlace and you're, and you're sending an interlace signal in via SDI, then your display will not show you anything. So you have to do a little bit of research ahead of time to make sure that the device you're connecting actually handles the video formats that, that you need. So, um, so I, I've been using Blackmagic products enough now that I feel like I can actually make uh, a good recommendation on this product, even though the only, only real testing I've done here is just with, within the course of making this video. But I think this is a product that I can strongly recommend uh, if it meets your needs. So, you know, if you don't need uh, frame rate conversion, you don't need a video standards conversion, uh, and so forth, um, this actually can work really well. The fact that it has the LUT feature on there is actually really cool. Uh, one way that I plan to use these in the future is uh, to take and apply a LUT to some of the video coming from some of my cameras to make them more closely match my other cameras. So for example, if you follow this channel, you know that I use some Sony PTZ cameras in addition to the uh, camcorder style cameras that I, that I normally use. And those PTZ cameras, the, the color is a little bit different. And so by applying a LUT, I can actually make those things match a little bit better. And I can do that by using one of these for each of those cameras uh, instead of the higher end uh, Terranex Mini converter boxes that I've had to use in the past. So a little bit of way to save some money there. Um, these, are, these are built very well. It's, it's all metal construction. Um, and, and Blackmagic is very good about the warranty. The, these Mini converters have a three-year warranty on them. And so, uh, and they've also been very good. I've, I've, had, I've had a couple of them die on me. I've got a ton of these things. So in, in course of, of using them, of course, one or two are going to die. And they've been really good to replace them. So I just send them an email and say, hey, this is the, the product, and here's, this, here's the serial number, and this is what it's doing. And they'll have me send the product to them, and, and then they'll send me a new one. And usually the whole turnaround and the whole process takes um, less than two weeks, usually about a week. Uh, so they've been very good about honoring the warranties on these. So if something should go wrong, uh, they're, they're, they, they're better they're back you up. So. Um, Again, I get, do, do, do give this product a thumbs up as long as you don't need anything more sophisticated that does things like frame rate conversion. That's when you're stepping up to, say, the Decimator series, MDHX, MD Cross, or even the Blackmagic uh, Terranex products. Um, but uh, yeah, if you just need conversion from SDI to HDMI, uh, this is a good product. Uh, this sells for $185, which is down considerably from the $285 of the previous version. And it's actually cheaper than the the high def version that it replaces. Uh, previous that that product was uh, was $195, and so this, this is actually $10 cheaper than the previous HD only version, which obviously didn't do 4K and it didn't have the wet feature in it. So uh, this is what I would consider a, a good bargain in video technology, and if this is the sort of product that you're looking for, and I do highly recommend it. So all right, so there you go. Uh, if you have any questions about this product, I, I'll do my best to answer them. You can leave those in the comment section down below. Uh, or you can contact me via the website. Uh, my website is at uh, djprod.biz, or you can go directly to the contact form by going to djp.li slash contact. And I, like I say, I'll, I'll do my best to try and answer any questions that I can about the product. Uh, if you have any uh, smart remarks, suggestions, or otherwise, uh, be sure and leave those down in the comments below. Uh, if you're going to purchase this product, I'd appreciate you using the link down in the description below as well. Uh, send a, I get a few pennies on the dollar for each one of those referrals that, that, that comes my way. Uh, do appreciate you guys watching. Um, also, be sure to like uh, and subscribe and share the video with others. So, appreciate you guys watching, and we'll talk to you later.